Hello again, everyone. Uh, now we'll be doing a commentary. Joe and I will be doing a commentary between World of Thrones and The Last Count. So let's enter. Right, and so Joe and I were actually both in this game. I was playing for The Last Attempt, QQ, and Joe was playing for World of Thrones. So we'll be able to give some sort of from some perspective from the teams. And this was actually a great back and forth match. Yeah, so right away, um, the two builds, it's actually very interesting. Because um, both teams run some conventional stuff and some not so conventional stuff. Uh, World of Throws is running um, a pretty standard double frontline AOD build with an Elsa Jelly. Uh, but on their backline, they're running uh, PNH, which is on the pot, which is sort of standard, sort of not standard. Um, while QQ is running uh, a standard Ranger Necro Mesmer, except the non-standard part is that they have two Axe Warriors. Yeah, so Ranger Necro Mesmer I think is quite good in this matchup, except the two Axe Warriors really do not synergize with the build at all. The Axe Warriors with Ranger Necro Mez uh, are really not very optimal. You really would really rather have sort of a Dervish and a Hammer Warrior. I'm not sure why exactly we ran two Axe, but it does uh, punish us a bit later on, I think, as we'll see. But yeah, otherwise, uh, I think that we had quite a good build for this matchup, especially considering you guys run Word of Healing on the Hill Monk and PH on the Pro Yeah. Monk. Well, right before this game, we didn't expect you guys to run this build. We expected you guys to run Mesmers and L Search, so we kind of had our Monk bars for that. Yeah, and you um, had Spirit Bond as well, so you're getting pushed here by the Ranger and really don't have all that great a way of dealing yeah. with it. I think we only have one shield guardian as well, which is uh, difficult, obviously, against a pressure build. Um, so straight away, we see that uh, QQ is trying to force flags, which makes a lot of sense, uh, since obviously they have a ranger, which is great for pushing, especially on druids. And uh, it's going to be difficult, as you as you'll see in this game, for uh, World of Throws to really deal with this ranger pushing. Yeah, Ranger Necro Mesmer, especially on Druid's Isle, is an extremely strong flag pushing build. And so you can see that what we'll do is we'll try and run flags on, on Necro. We probably should have kept our Invine and run over that, but we'll try and run flags on Necro and push flags with our Ranger. And if you guys follow it with damage and healing, we'll follow with more characters as well. So basically, if you guys yeah. try and follow our push, it will make our whole main team push up as we've seen this happen now. Yeah, it's like I'm. Uh... Number five, uh, the LA, which is me, is having a lot of trouble uh, running this fight through right now because I just got trained the whole way by a ranger and a warrior. So it's really great play from QQ. They're going to get a full flag ahead off this while um, the LA just is going to get shattered and stripped constantly and just run out of energy. Yeah, and running flags on LA can be okay, but in a setup like this, it's really, really, really risky because getting stripped and trained out and stuff is really hurtful to the alley, like because he loses all his energy management when he gets trained out. So as opposed to a necro or something, okay, so yeah, we do see QQ's heal monk go down right there and actually get yeah. the Hammer Warrior of Love. I mean the Hammer Warrior of WOT, which is love. Which is Yeah, that was actually a huge kill because WOT was just under huge pressure from the push and they basically just got a really clean spike to to get a kill. Yeah, this Hammer Warrior with Boss is huge, huge, huge for WOT. Like, it re really carries you guys throughout the game, I think. Um, way more than, like, it gives you a lot more pressure than you would have been able to have otherwise. So yeah, we do see yeah. you go down right there. I mean, the the biggest weakness t to uh, to running a Ranger Necromesmer build in this Fux is that you have a really difficult time dealing with uh, the Boss since you don't usually the easiest way is to deal with the bosses with Ellie's and shatters yeah, but, um, have without no way Ellie's, to it becomes boss. yeah it becomes really difficult especially with no dervish like we don't have any cracked armor so there's really no good way for us to kill the boss well at this point we realized that it was a terrible idea for the Ellie to run flags so um we had our mesmer run flags as well and th at this point actually your ranger makes a big play by pushing um our mesmer and uh, I'm late to react, so our mesmer, he's he's gonna he's gonna die here. Um, we had some miscommunication issues. I was just screaming at him to 
to drop the flag, but apparently he thought I was coming earlier than I was. So actually he's gonna die here due to no self heal. Um, I get a return kill on the ranger too, but we don't have a res for our mesmer and we can't run this flag in, so it's huge for you guys. Yeah, definitely a worthwhile play by Blood right there. A great play. And almost yeah, as you can killing see, almost got in range there to save him as well. Yeah, like as you can see, our whole team has to fall back in order to res our mesmer, and then there's no way we can get this flag in time. You guys are just gonna boost off this. Yeah, and you can see how I'm running. I'm the I'm the necro for QQ. You can see how I'm running flag at our front door. Yeah, constantly. It's kind of a mistake, I think, because it takes so long to run the flag over front door, and really not much time to run it over vine seed. So it would have been a lot smarter to cap our vine seed, I think, and be running flag over vine seed rather than front door. It would have mean that I would have been a lot to maintain a lot faster, and we would have been able to keep up a lot more pressure much more quickly. Well, at this point, um, QQ is just dominating this game, and it looks like they're gonna have a full minute. Uh, if Vesto doesn't get rezzed. Um, at this point, it's looking pretty bad for... Oh, Vesto just got rezzed, okay. But it's still looking pretty bad for WOT. Look how much pressure they're taking, trying to get back into their base. Yeah, but it's um, interesting though, this... because when we get into this position, and you guys don't have to run flag, it becomes very difficult for us to score kills and we take a lot of pressure. I think that, like, basically, all the success we've had so far in this game has been pivoted on the flag pushing, basically. And so it's interesting when we get into this ABA, like, it feels like we actually have a disadvantage. Well, it becomes very difficult for you guys because uh, the way that Druids is designed, like in the map, it's very easy for the uh, Ellie to hide. And uh, also the Ellie that can free cast is just like ridiculous amounts of damage. Uh, out in the open, it's a lot easier for an Ellie to get shut down. But like when we're in the base like this, it's really easy for me to get off all my damage. Yeah, so you guys were taking quite a bit of damage there, but we couldn't seal the deal. And now we're going to take a lot of damage in return. Well, Love is just training this, your heal yeah. monk over and over and over. You see how quick ran up there. Yeah, and it's very difficult for you guys to do anything about it. I mean, I think you're going to try linebacking at some point. Yeah, we've but, tried um, a couple times, but we just can't kill him very easily. I mean, it's very difficult also for you guys to lineback, because then uh, all your warriors and your monk is going to eat like shell shock, chain lightnings, and even AOD. Yeah, through so, the game, I think that Smokey was noting that we had trouble when we tried to just line back the warrior because we would lose a lot of that pressure on you guys. And, you know, because we're running a pressure build, our kills are generated by the pressure we have. So it's like the more we try and line back and kill the boss, the less likely we are to kill him because the less pressure we do. Well, the, diff the difficult thing also is um, when your warriors go back, then me as the ally, I can push forward. Like, I'm never in danger of getting turned around and spiked on. Yeah, so, we can see how far yeah. back you are right now. This is great play by you, because you're just sitting behind your own backline, just training out frontline, which is basically all you need to do is Elso Jelly a lot of the time. It's just be untouchable well, we found, by sitting so far back and just hitting frontline. We found one of the biggest weaknesses to the double Frenzy Warrior is to l Surge. I mean, Frenzy Axe Warriors are not very useful if they can't use Frenzy, and if you have an l Surge training them the whole game, then they either take a ton of damage by using Frenzy, or they they basically have almost zero kill pressure. Yeah, and this wipe right here, it lasts for a long time. It's a really brutal wipe, and because we're running a pressure build, you know, and the only way we can stop you from wiping us like this is by putting, by putting a lot of damage on you. And we can't really let the damage set in because we just keep on dying and getting pushed back further. Yeah, we actually make a very interesting call here as well, because um, if uh, we were talking about running a flag, but then I called it off uh, because I was afraid if we tried to run a flag on our number 8, then we would die. So we just made the conscious decision to let you guys boost in order to keep all 8 of our members uh, and main team. I think that that might have actually been a nice decision by you though, because even though we boosted, like, the wipe kept on uh, going up for quite yeah. a while, even through the boost, and had you gone to run flag, it would have relieved the pressure on us, and you know, as we saw before, the kills that we got were really like pivoted on the flag that we pushed. Yeah, I mean, our decision was we were thinking about setting our flagger to run, but uh, in a lot of matches in the past, like teams have been pushing out of their base, and uh, if they send their flagger to run, the issue is if we suffer one death, then we're screwed, since you guys have all the res and we have none, because we're at a disadvantage. So I feel like it was just a risky play if we were to run with our flagger 
and then 7v8 you guys even though we had pressure advantage. Yeah, so we do see the morale booth there which recharges all the res six, so it lets us res even though our monks wipe here at a really bad time for us. Yeah, so originally like we almost all our team called for an opportunity to end it because we kill all three of your monks. But because you had all your reses back, you were able to res both your monks. At yeah. this point, like yeah. we do a complete 180 where at the beginning, um, me and Love were screaming that end the game, end the game. And then as soon as I saw you had two monks back up, I was screaming for them to get out of the base. Yeah. But obviously, we already aggroed half the pit, so we're going to yeah. take a lot of pressure yeah. for this. Yeah, we noticed that you were just pushing with one monk uh, into the pit right there. So Yeah, we this sort of was a really risky play. Uh, we were just lucky that you had half your team dead, or else we would have full wiped for this. The Fisto is back in main team. Uh, did he get a... No, he didn't get a backup flag yet. Yeah, we don't have a backup flag, so we were talking about running it, but um, we were just really confident that we, we could stop you guys from pushing a flag out since we had AOD. Yeah, I thought that we had more DP on you than it looks like we have on the morale chart, so we would... I think that we really didn't want to let you boost. We wanted to keep up the pressure and thought, well, I thought that your monks might be a little bit low considering how much damage you took in our base. But I get trained out here really brutally by love while I'm trying to hold the flag, so I just drop it and try and kill you guys. But getting stuck in the AP8 while you don't have to run flag is really the opposite of what we want. I mean, it's really interesting because um, with our AOD build, actually, uh, we really want to. Uh, train one of your targets with both of our frontliners but what was happening was um you guys started playing on me a lot harder where you would send your ranger your mesmer and sometimes even your necro to try to shut down all my energy so uh, actually we made the call to just have love train with aod and then have our dervish train either your mesmer or a frontliner so i could cast my skills yeah, I think that was quite a nice play. I mean, we were taking so much pressure and, you know, our inability to shut you down because of your defensive play and our Mesmo was really, really effective. Well, the other thing I noticed in this game, actually, after after the game, I didn't even notice during the game, was that your Mesmo had no... Uh, no Westros cancel. Westros yeah. cancel. So, actually, I think a lot of times you guys were very close to wiping us, but we just played very defensive on your Mesmo. Um, and it made it much harder for you guys to wipe us because we took a lot of pressure due to our monk builds like we had no RC uh, No shield guardians Yeah, and, and uh, Yeah So I was actually saying uh, at this point to our team that this is actually a really nice position for us to fight Because you can see that you're actually pushed sort of in, in range of us in, in our base right here that we can strip you So I stripped you just there and we can sort of camp you and shut down your energy and I was sure that if we could shut down you a little bit so you couldn't cast it freely we'd be able to get a lot of pressure on you and we can see that starting to happen right now because well, you are really shutting down our worries a lot we're actually taking a lot of pressure because the one thing that uh, was preventing us from taking a lot of pressure was um, our dervish just training one of your damage healers, either your warrior or your mesmer. But our dervish, as you could see, was on your knight for about a minute. Oh, okay. I so your your yeah, so your mesmers and your warriors could just hit, um, basically like without a dervish training them, which is obviously great for them. So we took a lot of pressure for that. So we had to back out. Yeah, it looks like you guys are uh, recovering really well though. It would have been well, yeah. a good idea for us to try and run the seed here. I think that we might have done here. I'm not sure when we did, but we did eventually cut the seed. And well, this is really great better. play for you guys because, um, like, you pushed up on me to try to strip me, which is really good. Oh, yeah. Um, because, like, I think the play you guys made is because I'm basically the defense for um, one of you guys sneaking out, but you guys pushed me so far back that later on you'll see that your ranger is able to sneak out the vine seed and I'm not in position to stop it. Yeah, well the main thought behind stripping you was just that like, smoke, our frontline were having a really hard time dealing with the lightning surges. They couldn't really, as you were saying before, they couldn't really frenzy. It's hard for them to get a lot of damage off and get knocked down a lot. So if we could keep your energy down, then we could get a lot more damage off of that frontline. Yeah, yeah I mean it was, really, it was really good play from you guys. But um, like to do that, but obviously, like, if we're in a prolonged AVA, it's going to be really tough for you guys, to, just with the build compositions. Yeah, we should have focused right. more on getting that vine seed out right there than 
trying to win that idea. Yeah, well, we should have well, recognized Brent, it. Yeah. Brent goes right now, and uh, I'm not in position. See, like I said before, I, I wasn't in great position to stop him. So he's able to get it out, and I actually did not know he had the vine seed. Um, I thought he was just going out to split through our base. Uh, nobody on our team realized that he had the vine seed. So actually, you guys made a make a great comeback play here. Like we'll see it in a second. Yeah, it definitely would have helped us a lot if we'd done that sooner. Because yeah, we need to basically split up and get the flags out and stuff. Because if we can't get flags out, then we basically lose the game. So everything is just revolves around flags for us. Yeah, like the only way you guys can really uh, kill us is by, you know, like having one of our damage run flags and then, you know, that damage can't shut down one of your damage. So you can, like, if I'm running flag, then your warriors are free to frenzy. And if our mesmer runs flags, then you don't have a uh, wastrels camping your mesmer. Yeah, so well, either way, it's like great for you guys. We're pretty fortunate here that you didn't have a monk with you to push push our flag right there because we were really hoping that you know, if we just send two damage characters you'll only have just one Ellie back and we'll be able to get the flag in. So we're yeah that was great, we were just, we had really bad communication there because we didn't know your ranger had the vine seed so we really weren't expecting two damage there, in fact we had only called the ranger going out. So um, our, our front line actually at that point had pushed in pretty deep into your base so it was very tough for us to fall back in time. Now, like, you guys are back ahead on flags, actually, like, full flag ahead, we didn't have a backup. So you guys are actually in a really good position right now, um, to be able yeah. to push flags again. Yeah, well, we're gonna this take flag a lot is of really, this. this flag is in a really perfect position for us to push on you right now, but it looks like we're actually yeah, not like pushing you're, properly. You're already holding a backup, we don't even have a, we don't even have a flag at the stand, so... Yeah. You looks guys like, are in great position. Like Blood Red is pushing now, which is fantastic. Would be nice to see the rest of our team maybe push up as well now because a huge part of like what well, Smokey is going right now. I yeah. mean, it's it, this forces our whole team to fall back in order for us to try to get this flag through. Yeah, I mean, Ranger you can see how difficult it is. I was gonna say, Ranger Necro Mesma teams would normally have a lot more success with these kinds of flag pushes than we had actually. Like, even though this was where we had all of our success this game. But Ranger Necromus would usually do this a lot better if you have a Dervish and a Hammer Warrior frontline because you can slow down this flag a lot more and really sort of punish him for trying to run it through you. But yeah, without Double Axe Warrior frontline, it was really difficult for us to, to punish you for that. So we can see you well, just running the, through right the, now. We have no Harry's yeah, the biggest, no the biggest issue, yeah, was like I get we I could get one Aegis or any of anybody running the flag. We could just get one Aegis when like we're running through and then it's already too late to stop the person running through like you guys don't have multiple forms of snare only one bell shot so it's really hard to reapply it yeah so we are in quite a nice position right here this is the kind of position we want to be in where you're sort of really pushed up and we're ahead on the flag yeah so i mean at this death. point at this point uh we had really bad communication where apparently um we made a call for fisto to run but then we realized we couldn't um, see right now Fisto is going back to run But then your Mesmer gets pressed and we're like, oh no, that's too risky So then we decide to switch Fisto with Vesto, but uh, Vesto I mean, yeah, we were pretty slow to react on it So uh, now our entire focus is just getting this flag through as you can see all I'm doing I'm not even trying to cause pressure. All I'm doing is l surging this Ranger on recharge So you can't push our flag here Same thing with our Dervish like all we're trying to do is get this flag through yeah, this was actually a, a giant mistake by me to not run an extra flag here. Yeah, I thought that um, because we had just taken a death before when we were in that perfect position, I thought that if we don't kill you guys now, then we'll be in quite a risky position when you get this flag in. And there's no way that we can stop it from getting this flag in. So I thought if we don't kill you right now, we'll have a pretty high chance of losing the game. So I didn't actually run a backup flag until quite late. And so that was quite... Uh, I'm not sure if it was totally a mistake because... I think that the logic might still stand, but it does punish us that I didn't run a run a flag. Uh, I yeah, I think that I'm um, going to run it now. Well, the thing is, like, if we had died, it would have been a play, or if our runner had died, because he actually gets pretty close to dying here. Um, yeah, so in hindsight, he, it was a bad would... play, but it was really yeah, it was sort like, of forced into that position where we had to make that choice, and it, it was really not a very good choice to make either way. Well, I think you would have had that make that choice eventually, right? Because even if yeah, you totally. go run, 
let's say you go run a backup flag. Well, next flag, we're, you're in the exact same position, right? Well, exactly. Like, once yeah, we, we get the flag quickly, through. We took the death there. Like, if I had had the flag here and capped it right off, it wouldn't have made a difference with that death. We still would have taken a death. But the problem is that yeah. now I have to drop the flag. Yeah, I dropped the flag and I just sort of Well, now you guys it. are in a terrible position. Like, because it's just it just becomes impossible. Like, once we have all eight of our damage able to cast on you guys uh it's very difficult for you guys to aviate actually i make a mistake here by over pushing you and causing my team to take pressure for it well we make a mistake um, here as well that we sort of i think some of our main team tries to run back through our front door and some of us try to run back through the back door and so i think yeah, that we well, take it I mean, on the messing up. you guys are in a pretty bad situation right now actually because um Essentially, like you're seven v eighting us for a good like thirty seconds, and then now I try you're the trying to run the flag through, but it's gonna be very difficult. Yeah, I thought there was you no way that I'm getting this flag through without PNH in our team. Like that would have yeah. probably just been suicide. But not the thing is like we have to get the flag through, but we also can't run the flag through or I die with the flag. So it's like a lose lose situation, and we should have just all pulled back to our base, which is what we were calling, but it was miscommunication in which way. So half our yeah. team tries to run through the front way, half through the line seat. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, I mean, your mesmer is just gonna get 60'd here, uh, like at this rate, because. I mean, it, it becomes very difficult because. If you guys are falling back, you're unable to put pressure on me, so it's so easy for me and the Wastrel's Mesmer to coordinate kills on your Mesmer. Yeah, totally. Especially now that, that he's that extremely DP'd. We did get a flag out through the front door right now, which was a nice day bath, I think. Yeah, it was kind yeah, of like well, a I necessary move. I think your best chance is to, yeah, like, um, sort of what we saw in the meme game, right? Like, just pull back to yeah. your base and then yeah. try to try to split different things out because actually it's not super easy for us to defend where you're splitting out because what we have to defend is uh l surge with spirit bond which is not really that great against uh like rangers or necros i mean it's okay but not the best and we also have a uh, pi what? mesmer which what? is also not that great in skirmishes against uh what you guys would probably be splitting out yeah, so I was trying to push the flag there a little bit. And you guys are just all pulling back to uh, regain your positioning and get the flag in again, which is a great move by you guys. I did get saved here, but we don't have a backup flag. I thought that actually our Mesmer, when he base res, would bring up the backup flag, except he had like sort of too high DP, so he didn't really want to. So there was some pretty bad mis miscommunication by us to not run the flag here uh, when our Mesmer well, base res was in. Well, I think you guys, especially since your Mesmer is down, I think it's you guys should just go all the way back to your base and try to play for 28 at this point yeah yeah well, i agree i with think that. you're i think your mesmer just became too dp'd for you to even try to fight us um like aviate at all i mean it's so easy for him just to get at this point just to get trained out by a waste rose and a dervish yeah our heal monk is just getting Messed up big time by Love on Hammer Warrior. Well, I mean, the whole game, I think, is just yeah. a recurring theme yeah. where it's just very difficult um, for you guys to deal with it. And since you don't have PNH, it's, you know, it's like a vicious cycle, right? Like your heal monk has to kite, so he can't help clean your warriors who are getting trained by L Search. And it's just, you can't do pressure and you're taking tons of pressure. Yeah, I think that if he got bossed on anything else, it would have been a lot better for us than if he got bossed on love. The love getting bossed was like a worst case scenario for us, I think. Because like anything yeah. else with boss, it doesn't give you the same advantage that love having bossed does. Well, it would have been like a much closer, I feel like uh, if we got something else with boss, you probably would have been able to kill it. But then if you got bossed on something, we probably would have been able to kill it. Well, yeah, you so guys can kill boss way easier than we can. Yeah, so it would have been like a seesaw of boss exchanges. Like, that's probably what would have happened. So this game is pretty much over at this point. We get the flag in, but you guys are surely going to end it before we base res. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty back and forth game. Um, I think the biggest uh, issue was that it became really difficult for you guys to aviate us at all. We saw that when you pushed into our base. Yep. Alright. Uh, yeah, congrats to WT for this win.
thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.